While you were simping for Sylvanas, I was studying the blade. While you were messaging Minfilia, I was studying the blade. While you were asking your RuneScape girlfriend, hey, what's the drop rate on your dragon skirt? I was studying the blade. And now that the world is on fire and the barbarians are at the gate, you have the audacity to come to me for help? <laughs> Nothing personal, kid. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strifeas and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play every MMO I can find in a search to find the worst. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff. Ring the bell for all the future notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. More on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Today we are playing Soul Worker, an action combat instanced mission based anime MMO. It's on Steam and it's free, so let's give it a go. This is probably one of the more active games I've played, seeing a hardcore of around 2,000 players, so it's not dead, it's just not thriving. Oh good, there's our old friend Zing Code 3 anti-cheat invasive spyware, I'll have fun removing you later. Again. Launching the game has this chibi style splash window. One thing I did notice about Soul Worker is it's not really sure what its overall tone or style is. It knows it's anime, but it swings from dark and brooding to overly cutesy, then to slice of life, then shonen, then harem. It really is just a mess of anime tropes. It also takes a hell of a long time to load. The intro screen opens and the music plays, flashing neon hearts with upbeat eastern pop. I suddenly feel I've made a terrible mistake. Character creation. Soul Worker is a class based game and you've got nine to choose from. Each character is a different class and each class is either a tank healer or damage dealer. Each class can be seen in their basic class up or desire awakening pose. Because like every anime, every power level must be named and recorded. You can't just be a bit stronger, you must be desire awakening stronger. Each character has their age listed. One of the youngest is 15 year old Lily Bloomerk. If you look to the top right, you'll see her name is so long it actually gets cut off and this is the first example of the lack of polish the game comes with. The actual youngest is 14, which will have massive implications when we discover the fashion shop later. The oldest character is 19 year old Lee Nan who, as we can see, has huge caliber guns. She also uses a rifle. Each character has an alias. Each of them sound like they were generated by spinning the big wheel of teenage angsty words. You've got Desiree Desi Roar, Indomitable Bombing Spear, Spirit Arms of Passion, Howling Guitar of Sorrow. They just get worse. I go with Urin Arclight, alias Gun Jazz of Charm. I get to customise him somewhat with new hairstyles and see how different outfits look on him and I start the game and oh no, I've made Gun Kirito, haven't I? Intro cutscene. Erwin is an absolute genius and is so smart the world bores him and adores him. So when a massive city destroying cosmic event called the Vacuum appears, essentially a massive black hole, he walks on down and jumps in just to see what's going on. If you're a teenager, you'd probably think he's the cool guy ever being all aloof and laissez-faire. If you're an adult you'll know he's actually insufferably smug and his whole personality is I'm brilliant and bored. Inside the vacuum we are isekai'd away to another dimension and told the world is impure and we are the judge sent to deliver divine retribution and cleanse the lands of everything foul and only we can save reality and I'm sure this is going to do wonders for his narcissism. Game starts, WASD movement, space will be jump but we can't use it yet. First question Question, why the hell is the camera so jerky? I'm moving the mouse smoothly and it's shifting around at different speeds. Now if you use the arrow keys to move the camera it's buttery smooth but mouse move is awful. What the hell? So I go into the menu to mess with some settings and no. You cannot access the game settings menu until you finish the tutorial and reach the first hub town. You cannot change anything about this tutorial. Not the sensitivity, not the graphics, not the sound. Nothing. So I google it and write, the game comes with camera acceleration for controllers as standard. And this is a setting designed to smooth the camera when you are using an analog stick. Dead Space on PC had this problem as well. When you move the thumbstick on a controller, the camera moves at the same speed and slowly increases. This works for a controller, but acceleration mode when you use a mouse results in the camera moving slowly for the first split second then speeding up all at once, then just jerking around. And even when we do reach the first town and access the menu, there is actually no way to turn this off. 
We follow some ghostly blue kid around this destroyed landscape and then get attacked by wolves. Thankfully our magic powers kick in and we spawn some guns from thin air. To shoot, just hold left click and you'll start a combo. Combat is fun, it's flashy, it's smooth. Unfortunately, it's far too easy to actually be engaging. For my entire eight hour playthrough, I didn't need to do anything other than hold left click to win. Wolves are dead, we're rescued by a girl on a truck. We drive away and a giant wolf chases us. The magic blue ghost says he is part of our spirit and then dives into the wolf to save us all. We fall unconscious and then we wake up in a hospital. Talk to the girl by pressing F and oh no, our character is insufferable. They actually say, the female figure is a feast I cannot bear to forego. Jesus tap dancing Christ. You are talking like an edgy middle schooler who's just finished watching Inuyasha and thinks acting sophisticated is all about big words and placing women on a pedestal. I feel I should be wearing cargo shorts, a Dragon Ball Z t-shirt stained with Dorito dusk and tipping my fedora while telling you the katana I bought at a car boot sale has actually folded a thousand times. The girl tells us we're in Steel Graves facility, a base of operations for fighting against the junk souls, the monsters we saw earlier. We need to be tested to ascertain our strength level. So we chat to this soldier and our character says, I'm about as interested in tests as your pitiful neckbeard. Never before have I wanted to reach through the screen and strangle a main character quite so badly. We get told we are super special magic awesome. Not only did we fall through the vacuum of time and space, we have enough inner energy to manifest a weapon which has never been seen before. Great, so not only is the main character a complete prick, they are incredibly better than everyone else. We go into a virtual reality training simulator and our minimap is replaced with a little video feed of some anime girl gushing over how absolutely unspeakably awesome we are. Seriously, we shoot some boxes and she says our power rating is off the charts. Shift is dodge, which will matter later, and now we use some skills to break some barriers, but here's an issue. The game is action camera. Pressing alt unlocks the cursor and lets us explore the menus and move skills onto the hotbar, but when we press alt again to lock the cursor and return to action camera mode, the view very quickly switches and I was wondering why. So I did some tests and I realised this. While your cursor is unlocked, the game still actually tracks where your action camera would go if the cursor wasn't free and you were still looking around. And when you lock the cursor again, it automatically applies all of the tracked movement instantly. What an awful design choice. And now a pretty good choice. Skills have chains, so using one skill will instantly queue up the next on the same key. So pressing one repeatedly performs a powerful triple attack of three skills. The only problem with this is holding left click to do your basic attack is just as effective as all the skills. The boss appears, we hold left click and win. Then we get another arrogant as hell line and I'm tempted to die just to humble the character a little bit. Back in the facility and oh my god. God, I actually can't deal with this plot. We are told we did so incredibly amazingly well in the virtual simulation, we actually overloaded the VR circuits with our awesome power and have destroyed the facility. I'm not joking, that's actually the plot. They need to rebuild the entire VR training course because we were just too amazing. I'm going to talk about power levels and effort reward later, but for now, just trust me when I say this is a bad plot. With the facility broken, we're sent to the main hub city of Rocco to help the locals with problems. We are greeted with a full window with all the controls, then a daily login bonus, then a new player bonus, and now we can finally access the setting menus and there's not much I can do to fix the camera acceleration, but I've done what I can. It is the 27th of January. Why is there a Christmas tree still up? So the hub area. Minimap's nice, it's small enough to navigate quite quickly. There's nothing inherently bad about this. When you cursor over the icons on the map, there's a tooltip saying what it is, and you've got a vision cone on the map showing what you're looking at. There is nothing wrong with the design of this area. Chat to the locals. We're told to talk to the doctor for a checkup, and our character is actually impressed that a woman with a tiny woman brain was able to hold all the information needed to become a doctor. I'm sure once he's got over his shock, he'll post about this later on the Red Pill subreddit. So the plot is, 15 years ago, a vacuum swallowed the city, we jumped in, then monsters started pouring out of it, then humans manifested magical powers to help fight back, and then we fell back out, and we are the strongest, most magical human they've ever seen. 
Next up is the traditional talk to everyone in town quest, as they all stand around and tell us what service they provide. In one conversation, our character even says, quite literally, the world revolves around me. You know, I'd think this writing was satire, but satire has to go to unrealistic extremes and then make an actual point about what it's satirising. And the point usually is the opposite of the overt statements that it uses, but this isn't extreme. There are people who act exactly like this, and it's not making a point, because it's actually correct in the game. You literally are the strongest and most amazing people, and the other people do need you to be here. This isn't parody, this is power fantasy. This city is the hub zone. You'll accept quests from here, then travel to the instanced mission zones by just running into these big glowing gates. The missions are all short, linear levels, broken into smaller maps, leading to a boss, and each level takes about two to three minutes to complete. And when you do kill a boss, the game goes into cinematic slow-mo mode. This is just anime vindictus, isn't it? Open the inventory, layout is fine, however equipping any item doesn't cause visual changes. Your stat-based equipment is just for the numbers, your visuals are entirely cosmetic costumes. If you want to change your look, you must buy a costume from the shop, and we'll have a look at that later. Slight UI issue, when you have a skill chain ready to go, there's an icon on screen with the letter Z, hinting press Z for the next skill, but it's not Z, it's 1, they're showing you the wrong key. Kill the boss, then the spirit kid from earlier melds himself onto me. This event proves we are a soul worker. As with all animes, the level of power and abilities need to be given increasingly intense sounding names. We relay this information back to the main girl, and then our character actually says... Does that mean I can finally start building my own harem? I get a feeling this game's writer probably owns a lot of graphic novel games on Steam. When you have a quest, you walk into the correct exit barrier and you're shown four possible mission areas. Some quests take you back to old areas and you can take them on solo or with a team, so I try the auto team feature and it doesn't find anyone else to pair me with. Probably for the best, I wouldn't want to team up with this guy either. Killing enemies sometimes rewards ether and upgrade material in 8 hours of play, I never found out what it actually does. Grind my way through, finish the mission, accept more, go and kill more, repeat. This is the game, welcome to Soul Worker. I've got a level 5 gift box in my inventory. Oh, this is one of those systems where instead of trusting the player to level up slowly and equip better items, leading to small but important increases in power as they find them, you're given overpowered items every 5 levels or so, so you never feel weak. At the expense of never feeling like any of your own work is actually relevant to increasing you. It's MMO helicopter parenting. Never let the player feel weak. We rescue some people and get told to watch out for the big wolf boss. We are told he is an advanced soul junk. I'm hoping this means mechanically different, but no. Every single boss is simply bigger version of regular enemy with a few AoE attacks and sometimes minions. You win by holding left click. Even if you're not a tank, you can tank all of the damage easy. I'm only dodging to give myself something to do. Every single level is the same and every single boss is boring. Back in town, except a load of quests, there is way, way too much talking for what always boils down to go and shoot more things. Don't try and make me think you have a plot, soul worker. All the plot you have was stuck on the rifle girl at the start. There's a load of flashing icons on the screen, so I click them all. There's a new player event, so I get stuff just for being here. Then there's the full instruction help list, which is somewhat useful. However, the images they've used as examples are from the Japanese version of the game. So every skill or item name in the images is Japanese, another small but clearly overlooked and forgotten design choice. Now this Soul Worker Plus, an optional subscription service which gives you daily, weekly or monthly rewards such as more experience, boosters to everything, health kits, keys to enter harder dungeons, everything you need to be powerful is here. The 30, 60 or 90 day subs must be brought with Soul Cash and will cost you 1150, 1850 or 2360 respectively. So how do you get soul cash? You know what, before I even check, I'm going to guarantee it will only be buyable in awkward packet sizes, which makes affording these subs mathematically abusive, so you have to buy more than one packet or overly complex and you end up with too much and you know what, I was spot on. 112 soul cash costs $1 and there's no discount for bulk buying, so spending $10 gets you 1,120, which is 30 shy of the 30-day sub, so you're encouraged to buy the next slightly bigger than you need pack. So I check out the shop. Here's an item which alleviates decreasing stats during the upgrade process. 
Oh, I see. It's one of those you must upgrade your items, but if the upgrade fails, your items get worse games. So, of course, they sell you the safety net of not losing your best gear. I have a browse of the costumes because you tend to find most anime games are just advanced dress up simulators with an MMO on the side, and what the hell? I mean, hey, maybe arrogant cocky dude really loves him some badminton. Or loves big baggy pyjamas for sleepovers. One of the nicer touches with the shop is you can browse the costume choice for every character on any character so you can see what everyone looks like. Of course, you'll find out they've put far more effort into the girls' costumes, but hang on. I think I might need to remind people this character is... 15 years old. It said so at the start. Having her in a bunny costume with fishnet tights maybe isn't the most appropriate thing in the world. Maybe not the target demographic you really want to be going for. But okay, there's probably people in the comments or people watching this thinking, when I was 15 I went to a party dressed far worse than that. And okay, well remember that 14 year old? You can customise her underwear. Yes officer, this game right here. Every character has the same selection of costumes, by the way. Everyone has the bunny costume, everyone has the pyjama costume, everyone has the incredibly skimpy beach costume, because designing costumes based on a character's individual personality takes effort and time. Giving them all the same stuff with minor design changes is a lot faster. And then there's also the Soul Pass system, which is not the Soul Plus system, this is different. Soul Plus is monthly bonuses, whereas Soul Pass is different monthly bonuses. Check my in-game mail, I have been showered with free items on the virtue of simply being me, and this means my inventory fills up pretty quickly, which I think was the goal, because then you need to buy more inventory slots and you do not start with anywhere near enough for the amount of stuff you get given. More quests back into the mission zones, the levels are all the same. Graphically, they've got different set dressing, but if you were to break this down to its wireframe mechanical framework, they are exactly the same thing. Run into the room, kill the mob, leave the room, repeat. Each boss is the same experience. Once you have played Soul Worker for a few hours, you're pretty much done. Rescue this dude, and our character says, You must tell me who you are, and I cannot remember your face, because, and I quote, I have a disability which makes it impossible to remember the faces of men. Wow, you really are a bundle of the worst sociopathic traits, aren't you? Somewhere out there, there's a lone wolf kid who thinks you are the epitome of cool. I kill the wolf boss in about 10 seconds, and then our character actually says, I has done animal cruelty. I is sorry. This character is the power fantasy of your mid-2000s, 14-year-old, non-showering, MySpace-having, meme-quoting, Bebo-loving, IMVU-using, anime convention glomping edgelord. This is the exact kid who would prank someone by kicking them, then do the troll face and ask problem in real life. I guarantee they keep a diary of self-written philosophy and their favourite film is Donnie Darko because you don't understand how deep it is. Back at town, I talk to everyone, accept every quest and throw myself against this endless wall of edgy grinds some more. Finally, some new enemies. Does that mean a new mechanic? A new skill? Does that mean combat is going to be different in any way at all? No. No, it doesn't. It's exactly the same. Carnival balloons and evil clowns, though. I must admit, I do have a soft spot for the evil circus aesthetic. Fighting killer dolls and jack-in-the-boxes is fun, because I like the juxtaposition of childish and fun carnivals full of evil and murderous rage. I feel it's an underutilised aesthetic in MMOs. I liked it in Terror as well. So while I'm taking on some evil jugglers, let's have a read of some reviews. Boobs. Game is meh. Look at this instead. The RNG has RNG RNGs in it. Not bad if you want to spend an hour or two, but too repetitive. It's alright, just play the game casually. Forget the cash shop exists and it's a solid game. Something you can keep coming back to if you are bored. This installs malware without asking for permission. Zing code 3. This is to Vindictus what God Eater is to Monster Hunter, if you catch my drift. And this isn't a review, but it did make me laugh. The game Soul Reborn has been illegally minting NFTs of the Soul Worker artwork and selling them, and because of how the blockchain and NFTs work, it's unlikely they're ever going to be able to get them removed, so they've posted a notice asking players to really please don't buy them. Another reason NFTs suck. Now, a side quest needs us to defeat the Cane Wolf, a boss we've already killed, but this time we need to do it on hard mode. So each area gate leads to four possible level locations, and you can switch between all of those locations being normal, hard, or manic difficulty. You want to know how hard mode changes the level? 
It doesn't. It's exactly the same, but enemies have slightly more health. I discover I have some skill points, so I upgrade some of my stuff, but the level 5 gift box was so overpowered I can't even notice what I've upgraded. When you kill a boss, sometimes it asks, would you like to restart, which will matter later, because repeating levels is more important than actually making progress. Hand in a load of quests and our inventory is full. You also can't hand in quests until you've got space, so you're forced to bank stuff or sell it to a shop or throw it away, and when you discard items you're asked, are you sure, every single time. When you're talking to an NPC, you'll sometimes see the option start in the bottom left of their chat box. I assume this means start the quest that they're on about, but actually it means go back to the start of the conversation. To start a quest, you need to get all the way through the conversation and then click accept, which can take a while, so I start using the skip feature. By now, I've got multiple NPC plot lines all overlapping, but all of them are variations of go and kill X things and then tell me when you've killed X things. And sometimes those things don't appear very often in a level, so you need to repeat a level four or five times. That's why it asks, do you want to restart? It knows you're going to need to. Janice has a crafting line for us. She gives us a box, we open the box and get some souls. We interact with her and use the crafting to turn the souls into another better soul and then she gives us a blueprint and we use the crafting menu to combine the blueprint with a soul with a gun to make a better gun and it's still substantially worse than the gun we got given from the level up gift. Developers, stop doing this. If the first experience a player has with your crafting system is, wow, this is a lot of effort and this is crap, then they're not going to want to return to it. If you have a crafting system, it needs to actually reward something decent. If you have a player craft a load of items and then not use those items, you don't have a crafting system. You have a repetitive chore list with no payoff. A player's first experience of a crafting system should make them feel more powerful so they feel self-sufficient and will encourage them to craft more so they are happy whenever they find crafting materials, not simply thinking, oh good, my inventory's filling with stuff I don't want to use. Quests are divided into sub-quest and main quest, and when you go to a mission zone you can see it says sub or main on the level select, so I just power through them all. Some level zones have multiple sub-quests in them at the same time. As I mentioned earlier, one run-through isn't enough, so I grind. At least the loading screens have some nice artwork. A hidden quest. Dodge five times. Okay, not dodge in combat or dodge an attack, just press dodge five times. My god, what quest design. The costume override being permanent is quite disappointing. I like seeing each individual bit of my armor change as I gather more. Your weapon changes, but your costume takes full priority of everything equipped. Even if you remove the costume and run around in your underwear, you still don't see your equipped items as a visual override. Oh, there's a title system too, and the titles have passive buffs, because of course there is. And now an interesting conversation. One of the NPCs asks your character a question. Well, they ask if they can ask a question, and your character replies with, Of course, ask me anything, m'lady. They actually did it. The absolute madmen actually had your character say, m'lady. The question is quite simply, what was the world like 15 years ago? And you reply, full of idiots chasing money. Which is bloody rich coming from a heavily monetized anime MMO. You don't get to spout sanctimonious, self-righteous vitriol denouncing profit seeking while hypocritically doing the exact same thing. By now I've realised the enemy design is just visual, it's not mechanical, it doesn't matter what things look like, they all play out exactly the same. Oh, as for health, I've got 64 med kits bound to the Q key. I didn't buy any, you just slowly get given them. I had 65, but I wanted to use one to see what they do. They instantly restore your health. I cannot die. There's a cutscene of a big puppet strolling through the city, killing some soldiers, then we go and hunt for it, and some random clown dude shows up and talks at us and probably sets themselves up as a mini-boss for later. Hand in every single city quest and then accept more. Look, Soul Worker isn't bad, it's just repetitive. The combat is fine, it's just shallow, the world is pretty, but looks really don't matter. The gameplay is identical wherever you are. It's a roller coaster. It's fun once, and then you've seen what it has to offer, and then it's just more of the same. Fast, flashy, loud and obnoxious. It's the type of game you'd play in small bursts, when you don't want to think too much. Oh, there's player housing as well. Pressing H lets you buy one. They cost 5,000 zenny. That's the name of the local currency. And then you can teleport there. Your house is a top floor penthouse with a rooftop terrace garden. Because anything less than the absolute best and your character would probably throw a strop and scream until they got their way. You can grow plants, but only if you've brought the correct trowel for each pot. You can, however, see a ranking list of other people's houses, seeing how many approvals each one has. And then you can go and visit them. So I visited this house. It's the same framework as your house, but with soft furnishings added. So I explore around, sit on the sofa, and then softlock myself. When you get off the sofa, it puts you behind the sofa. 
but they've positioned it so close to a bookcase and wall, I can't leave, and you can't jump. And sitting back on the sofa and then getting up again just traps you here. Oh, now I know the writer has been reading too many risque graphic novels. Help me, stepsister, I'm stuck behind the sofa. Thankfully, there's a big leave button. Leaving puts me back into a different instance of the main hub, US East 1, and now there are actually players, quite a few actually. So, Soul Work It is an anime dress-up game with a home furnishing minigame and a combat system attached all under the guise of an MMO. Soul Worker is to MMOs what Jibia is to anime. I just go and do a load more missions. I mentioned at the start I discussed the plot structure and player power levels. If a player has no challenge to overcome, there is no sense of progression, no moment of victory. Soul Worker was so afraid of the player feeling weak and leaving in the early minutes, they gave every player overpowered weapons up to level 65. Which ironically means the entire game up to level 65 feels empty and pointless. I am not responsible for my victory if it's been handed to me on a silver platter. You need to let players start weak, have them struggle, maybe even fail, and then let them overcome the struggle and the failure to feel pride. The environments are decent and the combat is solid with nice flashy visuals and satisfying hit sounds, but it is incredibly repetitive. And when we finally track down the big puppet boss, I'm excited for a challenging showdown. This has been built up as a difficult thing. But just watch this. I'll play you the entire boss fight so you know I'm not making this up. ビッグパペットの完全に閉じ込めるので時間は約 how incredibly disappointing, such an underwhelming moment. And if you want to know why it's underwhelming, just look at how powerful the free gift armor I've been given is. Look at how much more damage the guns I've been given do compared to the guns the bosses have dropped. Once upon a time, this game probably had a decent difficulty curve based on actually getting items and weapons from the bosses as you advance, but now, just giving the player everything? This power creep is a complete joke. Also, I've just noticed I've not needed to jump to do anything for eight hours. Why have jumping in your game? Why have jumping in your tutorial if you're not going to use the mechanic within the game? Each quest has been rewarding so much stuff between the drops and the hand-in items. I'm having to empty my inventory between each one and then the worst design choice of all. Something literally unforgivable. You cannot pet the dog. Soul Worker. It's a relatively competently made dress-up and homemaking simulator with a flashy combat system attached and an MMO on the side. The levels are short and linear and extremely similar. They're repetitive and there's no challenge at all in the early game. The main character is more repulsive than a basement shop room after an all-day Magic the Gathering tournament and the monetization is classically abusive. It's the beach episode of an isekai anime made into an MMO, so to end the review I will award Soul Worker. You cannot pet the dog. Out of ten. Cheers for watching. Another massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. You can support from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, Discord and the second channel Josh Drive Plays where I review classic video games voted on by you. And as always, have a great day.